So hello there and welcome to the bonus episode of the Assignment Journey podcast. Today, Naomi and I from the skills team are going to be talking all about reflecting on your assignment, the bonus part once you've submitted it, the light, the last step before you start the assignment journey all over again. So we're talking today is the Easter special. It's Easter 2020 and we're working from home, so the sound quality may be slightly down, but the content will be just as good as usual. So today I've already alluded that I will be joined by Naomi. Uh, so Naomi, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Naomi. If you're only getting to know me in the fir- in this last bonus part of the podcast, then go back and listen to the rest of it with all my other spectacular appearances. Um, but yes, I'm Naomi. I work in the skills team in the library. Well, at the moment, I work in the skills team from my own home. And I am quite keen on reflection. So yeah. I... I wouldn't at all claim that I know any more about it than anyone else, but it's something that I feel very strongly about, something that I enjoy doing and that I do like to talk about. Again, regular listeners will know there are many things that I like to talk about, but reflection is one of them. So probably um, we've got lots of content already on the channel about reflection, and usually we work with Naomi on those. Naomi loves reflection, and so I didn't think I could do this episode without inviting Naomi, of all people. I would have been offended if I hadn't have been invited. Just generally. I'm offended every time you don't invite me on your podcast, Alex. Fair enough. Well, this is the last episode, so I can't not invite you to lease this series again. But what is in this last episode? So first of all, we're going to talk about reflective models. We're then going to talk about how you can reflect upon your methods and practices. So what you've actually done, the things, the steps that you've taken to completing that assignment. And then finally, we're going to talk about using your feedback. So once you've got that feedback from your lecture, how can you use that? Because the feedback that they've given to you is not informed by the methods that you use because they don't know what steps you took to complete your assignment. All they see is the end package. We're going to point you towards some next steps or things you can use for further resources in the future to help you take that positive action when you do reflect. But before we do any of that, I'm going to ask Naomi the simple question of why is reflection even important anyways? So I think there are a number of things to to say with regards why reflection is important. And before I get into any of it, I just want to talk about the difference between reflection and reflective practice and reflective writing. So we have a reflective writing skills guide that's got lots of information that we're going to talk about. And reflective writing is something that you might be asked to do within your course. So you might have to do an assignment that asks you to do a reflective written piece. And there's lots of lots of positive things, lots of good things about that. And like I say, lots of students are asked to do those kinds of assignments. What we're going to be talking about in this podcast is not that. We're not going to talk about a formal reflective writing assignment. We're going to talk about reflecting on your own feelings, experiences, the, your, your own experience of writing the assignment. And of course, the feedback that you get back from it afterwards. And as to why that's important, it's a very useful way to organize your thoughts to learn lessons from what you've done in the past and apply those to what you're going to do in the future so it gives you hopefully you'll come out with some action points at the end that you can work on for your next assignment and also it helps you process the experience of having written the assignment writing an assignment really is it is an experience it takes it's one that takes up emotions and effort and you might have spent weeks doing it you might have spent a few hours doing it but whichever (laughs) you spent it will have been an investment of your time it will have been an investment of your thoughts and it will have been an investment of your emotions and reflecting on that process can be really helpful in processing all of that within your mind and also working out those next steps for what you're going to do different, uh, what you're going to do next time. I, it, the temptation is always to say what you're going to do differently next time. But one mm. of the things we'll talk about is that actually it might be what you can do the same next time, but certainly what you are going to do next time. Yeah, I think it's really crucial. Uh, and I completely agree with what you've said so far. But yeah, I, I'd argue that um, the assignment journey as a whole, it's a cycle that happens repeatedly over the course of your three years as a student or four if you're doing a different type of course. Um, and every between every assignment, you can build upon that for the next assignment. And between each one, you can get better and better and better, especially when there's a time when you get your feedback and especially when there's proper time for you to think. So I always try to think about how I could do better between each one. And 
the way I would do that is I'd use a, some reflective models. So we've got skills guides, which talk all about reflective models, but I always found them found reflective models to be really useful. So in the description of the video, there's a link to reflective models, especially about the one that I'm going to talk about today, which is all about Borton. I say I, I am going to watch Naomi about it. So Naomi, what is Borton? Before I answer this question, I'm going to make a confession. I actually really don't like reflective models all that much. Um, I, I like that I would use them if I was, and you will certainly be expected to use them often if you're writing a formal um, academic assignment about reflection. And they can be helpful when you're doing personal reflection as well. Me personally, I tend to come up with my own reflective um, systems dependent on what I'm doing and dependent on the situation but it can be helpful to base them on some of the reflective models that's what I'm going to go so far as to say and Borton is the first reflective model that we talk about in our skills guide and I like Borton because it's very straightforward so I've spoken before um, in some of our other videos and some of our other resources about reflection having three elements you can see those three elements really clearly in Borton's model. So it's very simple, very straightforward. Three questions. What? So what? And now what? Description. What? Those critical questions. So what? And the future focused. Now what? Nice and straightforward. A good starting point if you've not used a reflective model before, if you've not done any reflection before, just to organise your thoughts under those three headings and um, start off with that and see where it takes you I think is what I would recommend. So those are some pretty standard models but the key with those models and as Naomi said using other practices it's all about applying them. Um, there's lots of models out there especially models and there's a link to them in the description as I said uh, and we cover them all in our skills guides and there's also another video which is linked in the cards right now and also will be linked in the description about where we talk in depth about some of the reflective models including Borton. But really to apply this to the assignment journey, I want to talk more about actually applying it to your methods and practices. So Naomi, what different ways can students reflect upon their own assignment? I think it's going to depend a lot on the individual, who you are as a person, what mm. kind of assignment it was. So if it was a, a relatively short assignment, for example, you might want to sit down and think about the whole assignment process um, so using let's use Borton's model as an example what so you could talk about what your assignment was what you wrote about what question you picked for example what you did lots of what what sentences coming here what journals you looked at what search methods you used what else did we talk about in the assignment journey podcast Alex um, okay. <laughs> what planning system you used what proofreading system you used all those descriptive what questions then to make oh sorry Alex you're about to say something oh I was just going to say about if you literally look at each different element of the assignment and break that down and think how can I improve each particular element and those elements are broken down throughout the podcast um so look at each different element and think how can I improve that and so Naomi was going to go into go into the next type of question for that so yes so you've done your your descriptive bit your what then again, using Borton's model, the next question is, so what? So start asking yourself those critical questions. Like I say, if it's a short assignment, you might want to do about the whole thing. If it's a longer assignment, you might want to break down different things. So think about your introduction. Think about your your the first point you made. Think about the second point you made. It's going to really depend on on the, who you are, like I say, how you like to approach things as a person and also the assignment that you were doing. But critical questions might be things like, um, did it work? If this is the way I proofread, you've got your description of how you proofread. Did that work? Did it work well? What was good? What was bad? I think it can be really important and people people can get quite focused on the academic side of writing an assignment. And again, like I was saying earlier, there's this real emotional side mm. to it as well that I don't think we should overlook. So one really key question that you can ask yourself is how did that make me feel? Yeah. How did it make me? How did I feel when I was writing my assignment? So the um, most obvious example that comes to mind would be when you were thinking about your time management and your planning. So you could think to yourself, say, say in your descriptive phase, you've talked about how you you 
will go to the extremes. You wrote it or you started at eight o'clock the night before it was due in. How did that make you feel? What were your emotions as mm. you were doing that? And those can be really key questions to ask. Again, we've spoken about the difference between a formal assignment reflective writing, which you are going to hand in and someone else is going to read by definition. This kind of reflection, you don't need to show it to anybody. You don't need to show it to anybody. You don't need to keep it. But it can be really valuable just to get these thoughts down and think these things through. So being honest about your emotions um, can be really helpful in reflection. And mm. if you're not honest with yourself whilst you're doing it, you won't get as much out of it. You will get out of reflection what you put into it, basically. So I think asking yourself those questions about your emotions as you went through can be really key. But there are I lots agree. of different kinds of questions you might ask in that critical question stage. Yeah, especially with the emotions point. Um, I think that's something that's often really overlooked. And I always used to compare how I felt between assignments. So I'd say, OK, I definitely felt stressed. But did I feel as stressed on this one as I did on the other ones? And sometimes I might go, well, well it was my dissertation. So, yeah, I did. I didn't do it. Uh, for reference, I didn't do one. Uh, I haven't done one yet. I'm doing one next year. But if you look at each different area and compare between the other, between each different, let's say, assignment, that's a good way to tell if you're making progress or not. If you say, actually, I felt more stressed, is something, is something that you've changed causing that stress? Because mm. sometimes you may feel stress anyways. I definitely felt stressed sometimes when I'd be doing my work on the day of the deadlines I revealed in the uh, writing the assignment po uh, podcast. But there's other things that Naomi said you can take into account. So Naomi, what's the third stage of reflection then if we're using this water model? So it's then this future focus bit, the now what that Borton uses. So you've written your description, descriptive bit, and you've talked about what happened. You've asked yourself those critical questions. You've thought about things like your emotions, if you're going to find that helpful. And then the next stage is to look to the future. So this can be really helpful. I find it really helpful to bring sort of closure particularly to that emotional part. If it's been an experience that I haven't enjoyed emotionally, and in all honesty, these are the experiences that I tend to reflect on the most. Um, I, I don't reflect on positive experiences as much as I should probably. Mm. I'm much more inclined to reflect um, experiences that I felt quite negative about. And I find the future focus step, for me, that's the most rewarding step, is that future focus. Okay, this happened, this is how I felt about it but this is what I'm going to do next. And as we've said lots of times, it might be that that's improvements, changes that you're going to make. It might be things you are going to keep the same. So there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't look back at an assignment and think, this is what I did. Actually, I'm quite pleased with that. Quite happy that all went very well. I'm going to do my next assignment the same. Mm. I, I really don't think there's a problem with that. If you have done that critical thinking, and concluded that actually, yes, that was a really good way of doing it. There might be little things that you want to improve. And Alex is bursting to say that there's always something you can improve. I can see it How in Alex's eyes. That? We are we we are not in the same place. We're both um we're both at home, but we've got our cameras on so we can see each other. And I can see Alex trying to say that there's always something that you can improve on. But I'm going to disagree with Alex at this point. I think it's perfectly plausible that you might come to a point where actually you're really pleased with how it's gone. You can do it the same way next time. But in the, the, um, the clarification with that is that you have gone and asked yourself those critical questions mm. first. If you've just done the descriptive bit, you can't go from the descriptive bit to say, right, and in the future, I'm going to do everything the same. You have to have that critical question phase in there as well to, uh, um, to actually really think it through. But Alex, you're going to get a chance to come in very soon. But I don't <laughs> think that there's any reason why you shouldn't then say, actually, I'm happy with how that went. I'm going to do it the same next time. Go, Alex. So I was going to say, I think it's just my personal mindset. But for me, I always try and think of what I can do. And I always find something that's wrong. Even on the pieces of work where I've got higher marks, sometimes I felt stressed on them. I've looked into that. How can I minimise that? What ways have I got to help me out and to make me do the best piece of work next time or an even better piece? Because you're always going to improve. And that's the idea is that you, when you start in your first year, if you, even if you get a good grade, that good grade won't get you a PhD with a good grade by doing that skill, unless you're ridiculously good. And so it's always a journey. Um, 
and so yeah it's always a journey and there's always improvements in my eyes that you can make and I always found things that I could do better maybe that's because of the way that I do things so I do things sometimes in a rush I know with this series for example which is what I've always been reflecting on throughout there are lots of things that I would have changed but I think it's still been really good but there's still things in that I'll improve for next series and the next podcast and the one I'll find things to improve for the next one after that so that's just the way I like to think about it we're going to agree to disagree on this one Alex well it's because it's subjective so you can it is yeah in different viewpoints Um, absolutely and different people will find different things helpful you know and if we get really meta Let's get really meta for a second. So okay. if you are reflecting on something and your reflection makes you feel bad, then do a like a meta reflection on that. Is this reflective process useful? Have I just listed all the things that I did wrong and have made myself feel really bad mm-hmm. about it all? In which case, don't reflect in that way again. Try a different way of reflecting. That's a bit, you know, we're going to start do, opening up black holes soon. <laughs> if you do feel pretty sad with reflection, just remember that you can always reflect on the positives because, again, even in something that is an abysmal piece of work, there is still likely to be something positive that you've done. And so look at, leave a look at that. I... Sometimes because I'm quite cynical, I often overlook that and overlook the positive sides of my own work. Mm. But there's a lot of things that are good in them. But I always focus on how can I improve things that are bad. But make sure that when you change the things that are bad, you aren't also changing the things that are good at the same time. Yeah. So, Naomi, let's now have a discussion about the type of things that you've done and I've done as well that we've reflected on in the past to make ourselves better or to improve our own work. So what type of things have you reflected on in the past? So can you give a few examples? Most of the reflection that I've done, I, I picked up on it when I was studying in my master's year. So I had a module that was to do with reflective practice in my master's year. So I did it then. And I enjoyed that. It was a portfolio based assi- assessment. I really enjoy a port. I love a portfolio. I love a portfolio. Ask me to put together a portfolio and I'm just happy for days. So I enjoyed that. And but the most that I've used it in practice has then been after I graduated, so after I finished my master's course. When I first started working in the library, I did a reflection at the end of every day of my first week in work and then at the end of every week for the first, I think, four or five weeks and then kept stuff going on a regular basis after that. I did would do reflection after I'd been on training courses. So all quite practical things um, and very, very work based. And writing reflective blogs like that can be quite useful, especially if you're at the start of your university journey. Because then when you're in your second year, you may still think you're struggling, but you can look at what you're struggling with and actually think and compare, how am I doing against that? Am I better? Am I in a better place? Am I able to achieve those things that I said were really complicated? If not, what action can I take to help that now? And that's really good because it either make you feel positive or will give you some new actions to take. Um, so I, I like that type of thing. For me, uh, when I was reflecting on my assignment, it was all about how I organised research because I always struggle with that and I still to an extent struggle with it today. So I just recently did some research for a group work or some group work videos that Naomi uh, made and or Naomi recorded and I still struggle to get my research into an order and I've been trying different ways of how to research and get that all organised into a proper fashion. So that was the thing I reflected on the most. And almost every assignment, I'd try a different method for that. And each time I think, hey, is this better or worse? How does it compare? What can I do to make this better? And over the time, I went from my organisation being just notes that were handwritten to something digital, to something digital with headings, to spreadsheets, to using things, using different softwares. It actually, I think it's got better over time. And so just because it's a process, do it, improving it once isn't enough so I keep improving every time over time and I'm still not there in the perfect method but over time I will find a closer and closer method to perfect and then I'll be making smaller and smaller changes so that's the thing I probably reflected on the most whilst I was a student and I still am a student in fairness and I still am working on organising the research uh, for my master's currently. So that was mine and Naomi's advice for reflecting on your methods and practices but we asked some students 
what their advice for reflection was via social media. So if you are interested in getting involved with these in the future, we're going to be doing some podcasts after these series, after the series ends. Um, but we're going to try and keep this going. So follow us on Derby Union Library, either on Twitter or Instagram, to get involved. We'll go through some of the responses now to share with you some student advice. And Naomi and I can have a comment on them as well. So the first piece of advice was all about using your learning in practice. So Naomi, what do you think about that? So that's talking about that action points coming out of reflection, which, like I say, that's the point of reflection that I find most useful. I wouldn't necessarily say that's essential for every kind of reflection mm. to actually have a practical application. It might be, like I say, if it's a very emotional reflection, that might not be relevant. But if you are reflecting on practical aspects of assignment writing, then yes, absolutely, let's bring in some action points at the end to feed through to your next assignment. And applying things practically as well, it really can help you with reflection. So I think that's a good advice, but you can do it, but not all reflection can be done with it. Um, so the second piece of advice is to take a deep breath and to think about the positive things. So I think that's really important because I did say that sometimes I'm a cynic and I don't always think about the positive things that I've done. Uh, but what do you think about that, Naomi? Yes, absolutely. And taking a deep breath, great advice. You know, sometimes you just need to to focus, to give yourself a little just mini, mini, mini break in the space of a deep breath. You can you can do that. You can take the time just to refocus what you're thinking. And also, I think reflection isn't always easy. Sometimes it's, it's a difficult mm. thing to do. It's difficult to look back on our own work on our own decisions on our own processes it's it's hard and you might need to take a moment to prepare yourself for that so yeah very good advice yeah. if you can take a deep breath you can also get get rid of some of the emotions that surround it and you go from the emotional response let's say you fell in assignment you go from the emotional response of maybe that's wrong the mark has marked me wrong to actually start to think okay i failed this is the reality what do i do what's good and what's bad and it can help you with that so yeah take it i think about the positive things but also taking a deep breath i think is really important um so the third piece of advice echoes that to an extent which says put down technology and let your mind think things through without distractions one of the i'm pulling up going to just check which model i'm talking about i think it's bolton we talk we have bolton's model on our reflective writing skills guide that talks about having uh, just dumping out yeah, brain anything dumps, that comes said, in your head. I and I think that can be really helpful to do it without technology. So, Alex, you type your notes on the computer, don't you? Yes. When so you're making fine. notes. I much I get much more out of note writing if I do it by hand. And I think the same goes for reflection. For me, there's that my brain just thinks about it a bit more if I'm writing it by hand and I process it differently through the very act of handwriting. And I think that can be a really good idea not to rely on technologies. So don't type it on the computer if you're not gonna find that so helpful. I, another, you could, um, you could record yourself, do it verbally, if that works for you. Again, that's using technology. It's about picking the way that works best for you. Yeah. So if it's going to be best for you to do it verbally, record it on your phone or any other device that comes to hand. If you, are going to find it easier to type it out on your keyboard then do if like me you find it more valuable to write it out by hand then shut all that technology off and do it by hand yeah and i i agree with that so i i do use the computer because i think that's best for me especially because i like comparing my reflections to see what the journey that i've gone on and i can't do that if it's by hand because i'm contrary to popular opinion with handwritten published printed notes that aren't on a computer and a nice folder system i lose them quite easily or they get scrunched up and lost or damaged and so i much rather than think i will find them if they're on a computer so that's from my own reflections i've decided to do that and try it out and i think that works for me personally um the fourth piece of advice again echoes this positivity and students i think it's nice to see how positive some of these students are uh, it's all about being positive what can you do better next time so remembering that reflections is really a positive act and how you're going to improve by doing it and how you're gaining and growing as a person by reflecting. Yes, definitely. Reflecti reflecting on negative experiences, the act of reflection should be a positive experience. 
definitely the point is not to look and think oh that all went terribly it all went really badly oh I'm such a bad person the point uh, is to think this is what I'm going to do next time that positive focus the next piece of feedback again it's again positive uh, it's all about the fact that you shouldn't compare your feedback with others because everyone has different strengths and so you could look at someone and say actually they're doing really well on this but you may not know that they might struggle with other things so don't compare yourself to others you're on your own journey and as long as you keep reflecting and improving upon your weaknesses, you can definitely improve. Especially, I say this a lot when I meet with uh, mature students, they often, when they start, struggle with academic writing and they compare themselves to students who've just come out of college, who've been doing exam writing and academic writing for a long time. But they're on different paths. And if they work on their assignment writing, they'll get better grades, whereas the other students are focusing on improving other things. So don't compare yourself to others, you're on your own path and just try to improve as you go and stay on that journey. Yeah, totally agree. Reflection is a very personal thing. And and think about that meaning of the word. It's, it's looking at yourself. That's what you look at when you look at a reflection. If you're looking in a mirror, you're seeing the reflection of yourself. It's not a it's not a group photograph. Mm. That's my profound metaphor for this podcast. So the penultimate piece of advice, so the second to last, is actually controversial by the what Naomi just said. It says about reflecting with others. And so trying to speak to your partner, your parents, or your friends, and try and reflect with them and have a conversation with them where you try to think things through and trying to get things out. So I think I've done that a few times. I, I have a conversation with people after things, and especially if they're a facilitating conversation where they ask us questions like the reflective questions that can be useful yes pick your people wisely I would say and make sure that it's not making you feel too self-conscious talking to other people about it so again it's about exploring what works well for you because it might be that if you're talking to someone about it you don't want to fully explore the emotions going back to the emotions for example um but it could be that actually having another person there who you trust, who you've spoken to a bit before about how actually this is something that's that's really quite personal to me. Can we not talk about this with other people? That might be a useful conversation to have first. But yes, getting someone else to ask those questions of you can be really helpful. And the I agree with that again. And the final piece of advice that we've been given by students, and that actually takes us quite nicely into the next section is to take into account all the feedback that you've been given and think about how you can use it. And so that is really the key thing. So as well as looking at your methods, look at also the feedback that you've got. So how can you do that? Well, that's the next question. So Naomi, how do you think you can use your feedback to improve yourself going forward? I'd say start off by really reading it. Read it take it in, make sure you understand it. We, I have done a lovely video about reflecting on feedback. Um, <laughs> and it talks about these things, making sure you, f you understand the feedback that you've got can be, is a, is a really good first starting point. And that you read it, it can be so easy, particularly when something's not gone as well as we might've liked, it can be so easy, or actually maybe it's more easy if something has gone really well, just to gloss over the feedback. But actually, the, your, the person marking your assignment has marked it. They've read it. This is their comments, their feedback on that. So take the time. Again, maybe take that deep breath. Take the time to really read it. Um, go through it. Maybe pick out the key points. And then, again, think about it. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Can you see what you might do to address some of the points they're making? All these things are really important to think about and then into that action at the end how are you going to what are you going to take from this feedback into your next mm. assignment i think the deep breath thing is one of the most crucial things that you said there so well uh, i didn't say it i was quoting from the um ooh. credit to the student that put it on our social media so yeah, i think the deep breath thing is really crucial there so i'd always say to look at it with fresh eyes um look at it when the emotions have gone away so you're not looking at thinking i failed Look at it when you are actually thinking, this is an action plan, what can I do to improve? And so I often, when I first got my results, I sometimes look at the feedback, especially in the ones where I did worse, and I just didn't want to be, see it or look at it for a while. And then when I look back at it a few days later, I'd then be able to read it and go, okay, this is where I've gone wrong. So yeah, try and take a deep breath. Don't, if you 
don't always look at it straight away when you're full of emotions and yeah. and equally the same goes if you've done really well because those mm. really happy emotions again are, are going to prevent you from reading that feedback properly because it might be you've done really well see this is alec you'll approve of this it might be <laughs> you've done really well but that there's something in that feedback that you can improve on for next time. So again, give it a few days. Don't look at it in your immediate elation that you've done really well. Take a few days, look at it when, you've, when you're feeling calmer. And I agree with that, as Naomi said, because you can see me nodding. Uh, when, you're in your, uh, when you're in your first year, the requirements for a 70 are not the same as the requirements for a 70 in your second year. And then again in your third year, and then at the master's level, and so on. So actually, look at what you've gone wrong and think okay I need to improve this for next year or for next semester or for the next assignment because that could hold me back um and just because you're getting a first now doesn't mean or whatever you wanted now doesn't mean that you can't do better later or can't still improve so definitely take a look at it especially if you've done well um and if you haven't got much feedback when you've done really well say okay what can I improve then and ask the lecturer directly so I um so I've done that a few times, especially when I've just been told uh, good work, one spelling error. I've gone, OK, well, other than that spelling error, what could I have done to get better? And yeah, your that's... lecturers must love you, Alex. So, yeah, so that's one way that that's some ways that you can uh, use your feedback. So a question that uh, when I was a student, a lot of the people in my course, when I speak, spoke to them about their feedback, they would often tell me, well, I'm not, I didn't care for it, I didn't bother, bother reading it because that's for a report, I don't have any reports left this year, what's the point? So what do you think you should do if your feedback doesn't relate to any of your upcoming assignments? Do you think you should still bother reading it? I feel like this is a, this is a leading question because I'm fairly sure the answer is yes. Yes, we yeah. should carry on reading our feedback. I have to say, Alex sends me the podcast plans before we record them. As It might surprise you, but we do think about these things before we record them. And I saw this question. It's point 5.2, um, number 5.2. What if the feedback does not relate to any of your upcoming assignments? And I thought, what if the feedback doesn't relate to any of your upcoming assignments? I've been dreading this question, but the, uh, the, I guess it's about looking for themes, looking for themes. Don't just fob yourself off because, again, this is only for your benefit. It's not for anyone else's benefit. It's for your benefit. Don't fob yourself off with, oh, no, that's not relevant. Take a look, read it, think about it, pick out the bits that are relevant because academic work is academic work it may look like it comes out in different formats it might be a report one time an assignment another time but those academic principles are the same throughout i would agree with that don't but also don't rule it out because in the future you might have to still do something of the same type so in your masters for example you might be doing a report and you might not have done a report since beforehand um if it's a dissertation you may think oh i'm never doing one of them again what if in five, ten years you might do it? So still try and look at it, still try and think, what can I improve? Because you never know what you'll be doing. If it's a report, you might be doing one in your job. If it's group work, you will be doing group work a lot. So still try and read it and still try and use it and learn from it, just in case you have to use them skills again. Because university skills are based on real world working skills a lot of the time. So yeah, Naomi, what we've been talking about a lot after using your feedback, we've had a lot of discussions about what the next steps are so you're all future focused so you're thinking okay what can i use now so we have some resources available in the library that can help you um with that next step so first of all if you've got any key areas that your feedback that come up like let's say critical analysis um or academic writing or paragraph structure and things like that we have guides on them on our skills guide. So there's a link to our skills guides without, uh, which is just a general link in the description that doesn't link you to specifically the reflective writing guides. Um, but we also have YouTube videos. So this channel has lots of content and lots of videos on here, um, especially we're trying to target all areas currently. So there will be more and more content available as we go. So check out the resources we've got on here. They should be able to help you with our future focus. Um, and finally, we run lots of events on the EYL calendar. So we have the Enhance Your Learning calendar. There's a link to that in the description of the video. But essentially, we run lots of classes where you can ask us questions. You can ask us, I've got this in my feedback. How could I improve this? And we'll talk to a class of you. We'll talk to a class of students and we'll try to advise you and give you some advice on what you could do better and to help you out. 
Um, yes, all those Enhance Your Learning workshops happening online at the moment. So again, we're talking in Easter 2020. There is always throughout normal life, there are lots of online workshops um, provided by the library. At this current moment, everything's online. So go ahead and take a look. But if you are watching in the distant future and COVID-19 is, is a historical event, then there may still be some events online. So check those out. Some events online, some events in person. So check those out. And yeah, hopefully you'll find them useful. But yeah, those are some of the resources available to help you out. Have you got anything you'd like to add about those, Naomi? Only don't forget the books in the library as well. So again, yes. physical books at the moment in our libraries are not available, but we do have ebooks of on um, these topics on lots of skills topics we've linked to some of those in our skills guides but take a look in the library catalogue as well because we've got lots of lots of resources available there too so yeah to go check out those books they're all useful i read quite a, quite a few books uh, to get myself the broad knowledge that i use to try and help you with advice and i read quite a few as a student and found them quite useful especially one about critical analysis um but yeah those are some resources available for you so the key advice to reflection really is to both look at the feedback that you've got and to also look at the things that aren't covered in your feedback, so your methods, your practices, and looking at what the next step is. Because the assignment journey, it really is a cycle. It's not one continuous start to finish journey as this series makes out, because once you've reflected on your work, you then start the next assignment journey up until you finish your degree or then go on to another master's and whatever, and it keeps going on forever if you really want to be an academic. If um, you're a perpetual student. Yeah. So it's a cycle. And so you reflect on your work, and then you get the next assignment, and then you're building constantly. So remember to reflect and use this as an opportunity to improve your practices before the next assignment starts. So that is about it for this episode of The Assignment Journey. And also for this podcast as a whole, if you've got any feedback about this podcast, please share it with us because that will help us to reflect on our upcoming on this series and also help us to inform our practices going forward for the new series. So if you've got any if you've got any comments, please share them in the comment section of this podcast. If you're watching on Spotify, go to YouTube and comment uh, there. But for now, thank you very much for Naomi for coming in and being our reflection expert for this podcast. Always a pleasure. And thank you to, very much to the students who contributed to the social media questions. We really liked your responses and we really appreciate you taking the time to give us your top tips. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in whatever the next series of this podcast is going to be.